Good afternoon, my name is Camden and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. This tag has been on booktube for quite a while and I did film a version last year, but it's a great way to kind of recap all of the books that you've read so far, go over some of your favorites and just kind of reflect on the reading year to come. So that is what we'll be doing in today's video. The first question is, what is the best book that you've read so far in 2023? For this one, I decided to go with The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. This book was super unique for me. I really enjoyed the process of reading this one. At its core, this is a kind of high stakes, pirate adventure quest fantasy. We're following a main character named Amina Al Sarafi who is being pulled out of retirement after a long and sordid career as a pirate in order to go on one last adventure. She does take the time to kind of reassemble a lot of her old crewmates so there was just this air of like the gang getting back together that was really fun throughout this novel but overall I just really enjoyed the adventure that these characters went on and also Amina as a main character. She's definitely more experienced than a lot of characters that I see in fantasy novels and it kind of makes her kick assery a lot more explainable and understandable. Overall, I really enjoyed this book and I also really want to pick up more books that feature older main characters or retired main characters kind of getting back into the action because it was such a fun trope and aspect of this book. Question number two is what is the best sequel you have read so far in 2023? For this one, I'm going with A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross. This is the sequel to A River Enchanted, which I read in January and I finished A Fire Endless back in May. Last year, I think I had only read one or two sequels at the time that I filmed this tag. However, this year I've actually read quite a few, at least four or five that I can think of off the top of my head. So I did have quite a selection to choose from. And in this case, this sequel was even better for me than the first book. I feel like I've really been getting into and loving adult fantasy this year. And I love that for me because even though I still have a strong appreciation for YA fantasy, it's nice to see yourself reflected in the characters that you're reading about. In this, duology in particular, we're following married couples, so we are following four main characters, but each are paired off in their own marriage. Following them as they're navigating marriage and um, navigating leadership roles that they've been thrust into, it was a lot more relatable for me than a lot of the YA books that I've been reading for the past few years, so I really, really had a special place in my heart for this duology because of that. Certainly the representation is not the only thing I enjoyed about them though. I also really loved the plot of these books, the magic, the fae creatures that we're following. A central part of the plot is about music and how you can play for the fae and things of that nature. I really enjoyed these books. They're either set in Scotland or in like a Scotland inspired fantasy world. I was never quite sure but overall really loved and highly recommend reading these two books. Question number three is what is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to? For this one I'm also going with a Rebecca Ross book and that is Divine Rivals. I feel like nobody has been able to shut up about this book in the past few months since its release and I am super intrigued and really want to read it especially based on the success of her other books. I feel like I'm absolutely gonna love this book. It's like an enemies to lovers or academic rivals to lovers kind of a story and they are writing letters to each other through a magic typewriter. That is all I know about the book so far but I'm super excited to read it. I have it on my fall TBR so hopefully I'll be able to read it within the next few months. Question number four is what is your most anticipated release for the second half of 2023? This one was super hard for me to narrow down because there are so many books that are coming out this fall that look absolutely amazing. However, I did end up picking one and that is Sisters of Sword and Shadow by Laura Bates. This one is like a feminist retelling of the Knights of the Round Table and we're following all female warriors who are the knights. I think I may have mentioned this before but I absolutely love the Arthurian legends and the Knights of the Round Table so I'm so excited to see that 
retold in a different way. Question number five is what was your most disappointing book so far? For this one, I have to go with The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. I had such high expectations for this book going into it. First of all, it was a five-star prediction of mine in 2022. Second of all, I had heard so many good things about it so even though I had it on my five star predictions list this was one that I had like zero doubt was going to be a five star for me just based on how much everyone was talking and raving about this book. However, I did not see any of the appeal that everyone else seemed to see in this book. I thought that the storyline and the characters in this book were very one-dimensional and underdeveloped and I didn't really see the appeal between the two romantic leads. I didn't really see any chemistry that was believable for me so honestly this book was just absolutely awful for me. I think I gave it one star but I may have given it like an obligatory two star rating just to keep the haters at bay. <laughs> but yes, definitely my most disappointing book so far this year. Question number six is what was your most surprising book so far? For this one, I decided to go with An Emotion of Great Delight by Tahira Mafi. I had heard from people that the ending was very abrupt and ruined their entire reading experience of this book and that just overall it was like an emotional story that just kind of like left on a cliffhanger and I thought that that would also be a problem for me but when I read this book I kind of felt like it was complete like we were just kind of dipping into a little slice of life of this character's tragic story that was unfolding and then we were raptured out of it pretty quickly and it just didn't bother me the way that I expected it to bother me and the way that it seemed to bother other people. It's a very emotional story. We're following a Persian family and a lot of tragedies have been occurring in their life and also following them kind of post 9-11 where the Islamophobia and the hate crimes are at their peak. So this story was just emotional on so, so many levels and really beautiful in my opinion. Question number seven is who is your favorite new author, debut, or new to you? For this one I decided to go with Lucy Holland who was the author of Sister Song, read this at the beginning of the year, really enjoyed it, and am eagerly awaiting Lucy Holland's next book. Sister Song was her debut novel so she is a debut author and honestly her first book she knocked right out of the park so I'm so excited to read everything else she comes out with in the upcoming years. Question number eight is who is your new fictional crush? It takes a lot at this time in my life for our book characters to reach crush status, possibly because I'm married. I guess if I had to pick anyone maybe I'd pick Jack Tamerlane from A River Enchanted but I don't know. I think he's better off with his own love interest. Sorry, I feel like that's kind of like a cop-out old married woman thing to say, but it is what it is. Question number nine is who is your new favorite character? This one I picked two. I couldn't choose. I picked Amina El Sarafi, obviously from The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi. She was just so quirky and fun and badass and I just loved everything about her as a main character. I liked her struggle, her moral grayness. She's like trying to be like a good Muslim woman and also like she just can't escape her vices, you know? She can't give up the lifestyle. And I also picked Kine slash Constantine from Sister Song. Um, Kine is a trans character and just watching him over time like accept his gender identity, step into his role as like a brother to his sisters. It was awesome. I loved watching his development over time. Question number 10 is what book made you cry? For this one I'm going with a book that I have not actually finished yet but it is the one that is the closest to having made me cry and that is As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Khatu. This book is following the Syrian revolution and 
I am like several chapters into it at this point. Nothing truly like heartbreaking has happened on page yet. However, we've gotten some background information from our main character and the main perspective in this novel about things that have been going on. And honestly, it's just heart-wrenching. I have not physically shed tears yet because I it does take quite a bit for me to actually physically cry about a book. However, I'm definitely torn up inside reading this book and I'm sure the tears will come. Question number 11 is what book made you happy this year? For this one, I decided to go with Atalanta by Jennifer Saint. I really, really love Greek mythology retellings and this one is a top tier one. It's my favorite Greek mythology retelling that I have read to date. I feel like this book was written for me, like from beginning to end, this book followed exactly the path of like what I wanted to read at any given moment. I wanted to read Nymphs in a Forest and I did. I wanted to watch a badass woman go on a quest with a group of men and hold her own and contribute to the team and gain respect and I got to. I wanted to watch Atalanta and her little foot race. I did that. I just felt like everything about it was like perfectly appealing for me and so it felt like a very personalized experience. I really enjoyed it and it really made me happy. Question number 12 is what is the most beautiful book you have bought or received this year? For this one I'm going with a recent purchase and that is this beautiful edition of Song of Achilles. I had another copy of this book but this one was so eye-catching and beautiful that I had to buy it. I'm showing you all angles and it has the little ribbon bookmark. I love that. So this one is super beautiful. I can't wait to read it. And the final question is question number 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I have so many answers to this one. I really need to read all of my five-star predictions. I have read, I think, four or maybe five so i have like seven or eight to go so i really need to prioritize those in the second half of the year i also need to read every sequel to every finished series that i have started this year so that would be part of the sun warrior by su lin tan i also need to read the next book in the inheritance games trilogy and I really want to read Heartstopper volume 4 so that would kind of complete out all the series that I started this year and lastly I do want to incorporate a lot more queer books into my reading for the rest of the year because I feel like that's kind of an area that I have neglected so far. I think I've only read a few books that kind of fall into that category so I definitely want to prioritize that in the last six months of the year. And lastly before closing out this video I just wanted to take a quick moment to reflect on my reading goals that I set for myself at the beginning of the year. If you have been following along on my reading journal journey, these reading goals may not be a surprise to you. I've been doing a reading journal wrap up series on this channel, um, which you can check out if you go to my playlists. But in here, I put down my reading goals for the year. I picked out six goals things that I really want to prioritize this year. So first one is DNFing books that I'm not enjoying. I feel like I've actually done a great job at that so far. I've really been giving books like a few chapters to grab my attention um, and then putting them down if I feel like this is killing my spirit, it's killing my desire to read, then there's no point in trying to push through it. Um, second goal is to read diversely. I think I've done a fairly good job at this. Like I said, I want to include more um, queer diversity in my reading for the second half of the year. I did a really good job at doing that last year, but this year I've just been reading more fantasy and I feel like there is not as many queer fantasy books on my radar as I would like. I have a lot more like queer contemporary that I have scoped out, purchased, have on my radar. Um, so if you have queer fantasy suggestions, leave them below. Um, goal number three was making reading a daily habit. This is one where I've kind of failed a little bit. I do feel like I'm consuming something every day, whether that's an audiobook or like sitting down to read, but I really wanted to like have a set time, 
habit like every morning I get up I drink coffee and I read like 50 pages I've not really accomplished that yet but there's still time in the air goal number four is to finish the series that I'm enjoying I am definitely making progress towards that I'm really proud of my efforts so far I'm currently also trying to like go back and reread some series that I had previously started and not finished so that I can finally finish some of those so I think I'm making good progress towards that one um, number five was to read from my physical TPR I've definitely done this a lot more this year than I have in previous years but I think there's still progress to be made on this one um, so that one's like half half done I've read some books that have been on the TBR for like five plus years so that's great but I definitely want to do even more and the sixth goal was to utilize the library more which I have definitely done I'm so happy to say I've been going to the library really frequently getting a lot of books there I have purchased some books and you'll be seeing a book haul coming out in the next few weeks however my first step anytime that there's a book that I want to read is to check on Libby or to check my library to see if it's available there before considering getting it through Audible or purchasing or getting it through Book of the Month or anything like that. So really proud of my progress there and happy to say I'm quite on track to hit all of these goals. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know your answers to some of these questions down below in the comment section. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see See you all in a new video next week. Goodbye!